Hello everyone and welcome to DW Randomizer and welcome in to another of the group stage matchups here in the 2022 Dragon Warrior Randomizer Summer Tournament. Alongside Lavkian, who will be joining me in about 30 to 45 seconds, I'm Ferran Burgundy. We'll be bringing the action here to you in a quadrifecta of individuals who have their first race in the group stages here. Representing the Red Slime group, we have Aaron2u2 going one-on-one -on -one against Billick. And representing the Magidraki group, we have Big Slamu and our Barbaloot. As yeah, this should... Oh, there you go. I, I didn't know if you were coming back, so I was going to... Uh, just yet, so I was uh, stalling for a little bit more time. Yeah, this should be an interesting one. I mean, we've got... Uh, actually, Aaron would tell you he's still sort of a newbie to this, but we know the names Aaron, we know the name Big Slamu, Billick and Arbarbalut a little bit less familiar, so we'll have to see uh, what kind of showing they present us uh, in today's matchups, and now we're going to get a look at these treasure chests. First belt and some gold to start, as well as the obligatory magic key. Now the object for Dragon Warrior is for our racers to find and defeat the evil Dragon Lord, and they'll need to collect certain key items along the way to trade in for the Rainbow Drop which will allow the runners to enter Charlotte Castle, the home of the Dragon Lord. They'll also be fighting enemies one at a time to gain experience and levels to get stronger, as well as gold to purchase weapons, armor, and items in their quest. Or to help in their quest, I should say. And, well, already we've got the Spell of Return. So our runners uh, taking varying paths here. And with that gold, they're heading all up to... Well, except in Aaron's case, they're heading up to the back part of the castle to purchase more keys. And then we'll get a look at what's inside the Tantagil treasury. Yeah, this is kind of interesting here. Uh, Aaron found a cave uh, right near start and decided to go explore that first. And we can see that that's different from the basement because the basement is just the Vanilla Stones of Sunlight cave with a death necklace. So that's a nice thing to have in your back pocket early on. Yeah, it can help in the later game, or worst case scenario, you can sell it and get yourself 1,200 gold. Uh, but meanwhile, wow, we've got a lot of those items to help in the quest right off the bat here. We've got some gold, we've got Erdrick's token and the silver harp, and we have the fairy flute as well. Wow. Aaron finding himself another key here. I believe he's on the second floor of the mountain cave. I did not see what was in that first chest on the first floor, but we have a key. We have wings and an herb. One more chest to check. Chat telling me that uh, top floor chest was an herb. And now finding a gold man here. It's casting stop spell, which... Isn't working out, although this low level one agility might be the undoing. No, Aaron gets away. He's got a bit of a walk to get to this last chest. Would obviously very much like to clear this cave out in one go. Yeah, there's there, there's little more annoying than getting four out of the five chests in either the grave or the mountain cave. But mm. here we see what a find, the Erdrix armor. Best armor in the game less than three minutes in that is huge it it's it could be quite some time before any of these other runners i mean they're gonna see this cave but are they gonna make the same walk to this armor now that isn't gonna help aaron with the problem of ha only having four strength to start out with but still a huge huge boon this early in the seed We'll be able to take some damage from a few different things. Now, we did see the Scorpion had the spell of sleep. Not that a Scorpion is necessarily an enemy that is going to be gone after at any point here, but Big Slamu looking to uh, negate that advantage, or I guess gain that advantage, I should say, in his particular race here, as he is now on the first floor of the Mountain Cave. And Absolutely. Aaron, yeah, trying to take a, a swing, but you're going to need a lot of coin flips to go your way if you want to take out this Magic Drake. And even with defense breaking it, I don't know if that's necessarily going to occur. Yeah, I don't think he expects to kill this thing. I think he just wants to try the Death Warp out of here uh, and uh, go ahead and check that treasury, which he has not seen yet. Now, uh, Jerry Gamer noting in chat that Aaron does have the possibility of doing that gold grind now if he wants. And it'll be interesting to see what he decides to do with that information. 
Uh, looks like he is going to use the one key here. Uh, so, okay. Well, it says Dragon Scale, but in actuality we see it's the Silver Harp. That's uh, part of a bit of an overflow here. As, well, treasure chests, they respawn every time you go to the overworld map. Uh, but due to the programming limits at the time the game was made, the game only tracks up to eight chests as open, so every chest open beyond that eighth chest can be taken over and over again. So in this case, having opened the five treasure chests in the mountain cave, taking the Death Warp back to the throne room, where the three chests are automatically marked as open, so you don't take them repeatedly. Yep, once you put everything together, uh, you uh, start printing money. As Aaron 2 2 is doing. And it just remains to be seen now how much gold Aaron is going to want to get. I mean, we have not seen any towns yet. And uh, everyone else is having a pretty difficult time getting off the ground here. Just again, that four power just makes things so hard. You're not getting guaranteed damage on anything. I haven't seen a single slime on anyone's screen. Oh, oh no. no! I saw and it too. Yeah. Both Billick and our Barbaloot finding out the hard way that Drakeys have the spell of hurt more. And the worst part is that Billick actually got a critical hit on the Drakey, but only rolling three damage uh, was not able to take it out, was not able to get any experience for himself, and that is just brutal. And I was mistaken, I forgot that there was a second, or there was a magic key in the mountain cave, so Aaron did have enough to open the treasury and still go back to the key shop. So everything pretty much squared away there. Yeah, this and is... There's... Death so necklace. this is a rough start. Yeah, there's the, yeah, there's death necklace for Aaron. And a little more topping off of gold if he wanted to, but why not go back to the one that has more if you're going to top it off. Here's a red slime on Billick's side, kind of out of the way here, it looks like. Yeah, he might be kind of in that zone one territory, or he might even be off in the corner in a zone of who knows what. Uh, but uh, once you find a red slime, you want to keep looking for more. Definitely in zone one at the very least, as we see that poltergeist. Yeah, those next tier of enemies outside of your kind of base seven. And Aaron really just trying as hard as possible to find a town going away that I don't think anyone else has gone yet. And uh, knows, I mean, Aaron's got, what, now about 5,000 gold left? I mean, you could die two or three times, and if you can even just find a club... A hand axe would be gigantic. Big Slam move first to find a town, and... Oops. Of course, it's Hawksness. The abandoned town. Would you expect nothing less? You know, you, you just kind of hope that maybe that location is going to break you out of jail, and nope, it's just a worse jail. We also see the Rainbow Drop Cave just to the south southwest of the starting castle. That being known affectionately as the Jerk Cave, because, well, if you don't have all the items, most notably Erdrick's token, he will kick you out of the cave like the jerk that he is. Absolutely. Alrighty, Aaron, I think finding a little bit of a narrow passageway out of start, but no, oh. the fun police do not care about your armor. Stereo deaths there for Slamu and Aaron to a Magi Wyvern in that respective or disrespected, if you will, Red Dragon. So for all the items found here, the experience, uh, it's a bit of a pitcher's duel here. Yeah, this is a pretty tough start for all of our runners, although our Barbaloo making a pretty important find. Yeah, there is the Staff of Rain Cave trading in that silver harp that was found just a little bit ago in the Tangential Treasury, trading it in for the Staff of Rain. That is one of the three items needed to acquire the Rainbow Drop. The others being Erdrick's Token, already picked up as well, and the presently elusive Stones of Sunlight. So 
Barbaloot now working with the heal spell, trying to take out this ghost here, and this might be the best way to go. Aaron, meanwhile, going with the harp strategy, utilizing the harp to summon a random enemy. Yeah, you never know if uh, one of those enemies is going to be the thing that finally gets you some progress here, but uh, now deciding that maybe that's not the best course of action... Our Barbaloot still trying to take on... I don't know how much damage he's done to this ghost, if any. Would really want a critical hit to make this a little bit more viable. Well, it's out of heal spells at the moment, as now Billick is in the mountain cave. Now, our Barbaloot also doing this without the... Aid of Erdrick's armor. Aaron now trying to paint the zone corners. He's looking for zone one. He's trying to see if maybe he can find a slime somewhere to fight. Oh, actually, okay. This is an interesting setup here because he's basically right next to Tantagel and is in, still in zone one. So we don't know exactly where zone zero is. And I think that's what Aaron is trying to find. He's hoping that there's slimes in here somewhere that he might have missed. But instead finds a fire-breathing magician. Magic Wyverns are apparently also in the mountain caves, so they could be a bit of a hindrance here to, well, any of the runners who have yet to find the Erdrick's armor. Yeah, Erdrick's armor really just not doing much right now because, again, there's just nothing out there that they can really fight. There is that uh, Jerk Cave and Hawksness found by Aaron, so... As far as I'm aware, I mean, it's hard to keep track of four different screens at once, but I think everyone's just about even on that knowledge, with, of course, the exception of Aaron having that Erdrick's armor. He knows everything that everybody else knows. Except nobody knows where a non hawksness town is, so there is that. Yeah, and some uh, commentary going on here in chat as to whether or not... Uh, Aaron saved after getting that money. I didn't see if he did either. I'd be a little bit surprised if he didn't. And so there, if he did, there would, of course, be that possibility of resetting after finding a town so he can maybe get that 10,000 gold back that he had grinded up before. And the more I see these runners kind of wandering around in different directions, it looks like they can go, there's a way they can go to the west and a way they can go to the east, and there's Sherlock enemies waiting in both directions. So it really is going to come down to, can you make that hero walk, or do you need that hero crit in order to maybe get to level 2 and, and get yourself some better stats? Looks like the only one of the four at the moment with any experience is Billick, who took out a red slime. And... Big Slamu with, I believe that was a reset. Leave it to this game to provide an early choke point here. Yeah, two experienced Billet just needs to kill a Drakey that happens to have hurt more and... Oh, wait a minute now. Here's a metal slime. This would be absolutely gigantic. Wow. Gets one hit, gets two hits. Three hits in a row. Fortune favors the favorites. And we're going to go ahead and jump up to level 3 immediately. 13-7, 13-18. And Aaron to you 2 is officially out of jail. Yeah, the metal slimes. Now, is it just the scaled flag that is on, but not scared? Or is it both? That I'm unaware of. Clearly, the scaled flag is on. Um... And the Scared Flag might as well be on now for all intents and purposes, as uh, Aaron's going to be up to 22 strength, so they can run away. It should be both. Okay, so 
That being said, that it's not necessarily a 100% guarantee that the Metal Slime was going to stick around and... Well, apparently level 4 had occurred, but the statistics gain uh, didn't really get the memo on that. Oh, it is only scaled. Okay, so it was a... Uh, so that was a guarantee with the strength being under 20 that that metal slime was not going to run away. Yeah, and now Aaron has that hurt spell and looks to be trying to take on this magician. The magician does have heal more, but with that hurt spell, she'll be able to take it out and does. And wow, I mean, we are off to the races at this point. And by we, you mean the viewing audience here on DW Randomizer, the folks behind the scenes, and Aaron to you, too. Yes, exclusively. Three, not so much. <laughs> this is the game leveling out. It's like, all right, you're going to get Erdrick's token, the silver harp, and the fairy flute. And in one case, Erdrick's armor, all in about a two-minute span. Okay, now, for the next 20 minutes, you get nothing and like it. Okay, so now I see Aaron, uh, I want to say was walking back and forth in the mountain cave to maybe try to find more, uh, to try to find more, uh, metal slimes, but now maybe looking to make his way through the mountain cave, there's a wizard who's going to say no. I'm curious what exactly he was thinking about doing, though. I think just looking for killable enemies at this point. I mean, the hurt spell definitely gives a few additional options. I, I don't think that it would be to Aaron's advantage necessarily to go looking for another metal slime, but those druins, or rather drolls, I should say, the magicians, those look to be viable options at this point. Meanwhile, Billick has found another red slime and is just one more of those away from at least getting a level and hopefully being able to get some sort of progression. Meanwhile, Aaron hits level 5, 217. I missed the HP, but 14 MP. That 17 agility uh, is going to be very welcome here. Billick now finding the town of Coal could potentially get a free item here. Or not. Whole lot of nothing in coal, at least in terms of the search spot. And, well, just browsing as far as the weapon shop. Question in chat, is it me or is this seed really mean? Uh, only the seeds that end in a number. He says tongue-in-cheekly. Chat noting that uh, if Billa can get back to Cole with any amount of money, I, I, I imagine uh, I didn't get a look at the shop, but uh, there must have been a copper sword available there. And so we did see Billa grab some gold and immediately start to head back. That would be pretty big here. That would... Uh, at least give him a little bit of contention uh, going up against uh, the armor and the extra levels of uh, his opponent, Aaron Tu2. Yeah, the and... items, or the weapons that were there, or the, the weapons and armory were the club. Oh no, there's a werewolf that's going to hinder that progress. Uh, the club, the copper sword, the leather armor, the full plate, and the magic armor. I did not see what Big Slamu managed to kill, but uh, has now gotten 12 experience and uh, is now level 2. Also did not see how much power there was. We know between levels 2 and 3 there's 18 power to be had. But is Big Slamu actually out of jail or not? Not too clear on that. I believe... Yeah, as I'm looking here at the replay, it was just going toe-to-toe -to -toe with a Magidrake and was somehow able to get some favorable rolls on a, a zero-to-one coin flip. 
used up the heal spells, the herbs, pretty much all the resources, and got a crit for three that certainly helped as well. And yeah, seven, five, five, and ten are the numbers from level one to level two. Well, now Big Slam is finding a Metal Slam of his own, and we know his power is low enough that it can't run away, but unfortunately he doesn't have any healing left. No, it has one herb. I want to say he has gotten at least one damage in. There's another point. Can he get another attack to connect? Is that going to do it? Yes, it is. He's going to get more experience than Aaron got out of his. So that's going to really jumpstart him here. Should get him up to level... Though it looks like it's just going to get him to level three no level four so he does get that hurt spell and now the left side of our screen has a commanding lead over their respective opponents oh wow and here's another metal slime and with 18 attack is still under the threshold so this could be another kill here and 32 times four quick math 128 more experience could very likely be coming big slamu's way here I believe he's land. Oh, it doesn't matter how many hits he's landed. He's going to take it down with a Kaishin to Ichigeki. Six, 18, 5, and 28. And there's the Erdrich's armor. Wow. Just steps before everything coming up. Slamu here for the moment. Absolutely. This is pretty huge. Uh, in, in situations like this, I mean, we see Billick, uh, it looks like, did make it to Cole, managed to pick up that uh, copper sword and leather armor. And so, has a little bit more information than Aaron. Aaron seems to be committed in uh, trying to get west and make some progress that way, although I think we saw on Billick's screen there's nothing over there. Oh, that was almost interesting. So Aaron, thankfully taking that split second, almost moved one slot down in the item inventory, thinking that he still had herbs, and just below the magic key would have been the death necklace, and that could have been very problematic had Aaron accidentally put that on, as it is a cursed item. Yeah, if you put on a cursed item, uh, anytime you die, instead of getting your HP and MP refilled, you get booted out of Tantagel with one hit point. Now, in this scenario, that's not a complete game ender, as you do have Erdrick's armor. You are heal walking, you're not taking damage from the swamp. But Aaron doesn't know where Cole is. Now, we know Cole is about a screen and a half to the east here. But you have to make it there in order to get to the end, so you really don't want to be putting on any cursed items this early in the game. But again, fortunately with Eric's Erdrich's armor, it would not be an absolute game ender. Right, Billick, meanwhile, has taken out a Magidrake here and has advanced to level three. And yeah, Billick has been still trying to get off the ground here. Billick has been doing a good job of just making use of every possible resource he can find. Big Slambu now finding the old man who will trade in that harp for that staff of rain. And yeah, this is this is this is unfortunate here. Uh, I don't know if Barbaloot has been trying to get out on the map and, and see anything. We have seen Sherlock monsters again in both of the directions our runners can really go. Big Slamu about to find Cole. Barbalute needs to find Cole sooner rather than later if he wants to have any hope of catching up to Big Slamu. Nice crit for Billick. Gets the Magician, gets level 4, and very importantly gets the Hurt spell because, well, when your other stats games are 1-0-0-1, you have to hang your hat on something. Yeah, in situations like this, that hurt spell can be quite the lifesaver, and we see Aaron making use of it right now, damage breaking this wolf already, and it has stop spell. This is pretty much a goldmine of experience right here. Yeah, Erdrick's armor negates the stop spell that's cast by enemies, so it will never hit, but there is level 7, 19 power, 2 speed, 2 hit points, 3 magic points, and the spell of outside. You always like to see that outside spell early. 
Uh, we've still got the grave out there, so it makes diving the grave a little bit um, nicer. And, of course, you can get from the south side of the swamp to the north side of the swamp really easily. And if you find that tablet cave, it's going to make exploring that quite a bit quicker as well. So maybe you want to see hurt more or heal more, but always nice to have outside in your back pocket. It's certainly better than no spell. Oh, and now the Metal Slime running away since Big Slamu's uh, uh, strength is above the 20 threshold. Now, the reason that's important that we mention the number 20, it's because an enemy can run away from you if your strength statistic is at least double the, I believe it's agility, or no, not agility, double the strength of the enemy to which you are facing. That's what it is. So with the Metal Slime having 10 strength, if you have a max, or if you have a minimum of 20 strength, then that enemy can run away from you. Well, we see all of our runners pretty much just trying to get more experience for themselves, not happy with the stats as they are. And uh, Aaron, looking at level 7 here, only has 39 agility, it probably wants a little bit more, especially, again, it's really hard uh, if you're one of those runners that prefers to kind of get the experience early, as Aaron clearly does. It's really hard to turn away from these wolves. They're so nice. Big Slam with finding Rimbledar, by the way. Yep, Key Town, although at this juncture with the early key availability, not as pressing, but there is a torch so that can at least help with sight in the cave. And it's one less search spot, but there's also a town... or a, a town weaponry hall, but... Nothing all that great. Chainmail. But with Erdrick's armor, you're not going to be getting that. Yeah, nothing too game-changing there in Rimmeldar. Um, always nice to cross that off your list of things that you need to find. And here is that aforementioned Tablet Cave. Now, I don't think Big Slabu picked up that outside spell for himself. Uh, but uh, we'll go ahead and dive this, just in case something important is here. I think he did. He and Aaron are both in the level lead at 7. And there's a dragon scale, so that's going to get put on for an additional 2 defense. And there's the outside spell to save eh, about 45 seconds of tra traveling. Or something there. Or maybe it cuts it from 45 to 23. I don't know. It's been a while since I've commentated this. In any event, it does save you the trip outside. Wow, gets away from the AK-47, only to get back attacked by a demon knight, survives with one hit point, and gets away again! Preserving his position on the map. Something you always uh, want to do is uh, you're kind of far away from home here, and you'd really like to find another location or two if they exist. Here's a cave. Meanwhile, level 8 for Aaron 2U2, 5, 8, 2, and 4, I believe, were the respective statistics. And, oh, the Red Dragon has sleep. Oh, boy, you hate to see it. Meanwhile, Big Slamu found Swamp North, and so is now officially the first of our runners to find potentially the opposite continent. Potentially the same continent remains to be seen, but uh, still a lot of... Continent, a lot of land to explore here for Big Slamu. And there's that Armored Knight once again, and oh, the perfect bid. Something, something, $100 bill, Bob Barker's pocket. Yeah, it's a little unfortunate. That's, uh, I don't know exactly how many screens to the east. It looked about two and a half screens to the east. Then you had to go up towards those bridges. So it may be a while before Big Slamu makes it back to that cave, but uh, gonna go ahead and check the southwest quadrant of this opening continent. I don't think we've seen anyone make any significant progress in this direction. A 
apparently the wizards, yeah, with the uh, the, the DL2 breath, that massive fire breath, or uh, immersive fire breath, it takes, uh, without the armor, anywhere from 65 to 72 hit points of damage, with the armor, 42 to 48. And now level 5 for Barbaloot. And oh boy, there's a werewolf. Able to get away. Billick, meanwhile, has... Gone into a cave. Ah, this is the second... Yeah, the, the lower floor of the mountain cave. Gonna utilize the fairy flute to try to gain the exploration here. It's a little bit of a challenge when you have the runners traversing in the dark. It's not something that's necessarily required, but you see a lot of runners doing it just to save that little bit of time of utilizing a torch, or if they don't have a torch in their inventory, or if they don't have the radiant spell, uh, trying to navigate their way around. Yeah, if you haven't, uh, if, if you have picked up a torch, sometimes it can be nice to save it for future locations like Sherlock, for example, if you are confident in exploring the cave that is in front of you, uh, but of course that's just always the option, the choice of the runners. Critical hit on this Metal Slime. Now we have three of our runners all getting a Metal Slime each, and that is going to put a nice thick dent into the experience gap between Billick and Aaron. Yeah, Billick now up to level 7, and is going to pick up the two items up top here, the wings and the herb. But the big prize is at the end, little does Billick know. Yeah, and this is one of those situations where once you find it, uh, you, you kind of start kicking yourself. You're thinking, wow, we are 32 minutes into one of the worst seeds that uh, any of our runners has probably ever played, and Airdrick's armor was right there the entire time. Billick does manage to get it, and we see a little bit <laughs> a little bit of hesitation on the spell menu before casting that outside. Maybe a little bit of uh, four-letter word usage behind the scenes. Yeah, words like cool. Neat. No, not, not those. I mean, potentially those, and others as well. Yeah, fun with two ends, exactly, chat. Yeah, good, that's another one. I don't know how we turn this into a word association game, but that's neither here nor there. Aaron continuing to try to pile on some experience here as Slamu takes out this wolf to get level 8. I am curious uh, how much further Aaron is going to go with this. As I said before, it is a little bit hard to just walk away from these wolves. I mean, it's about as close to free real estate as you're ever going to find in Dragon Warrior Randomizer. But with the agility being what it is, having that heal spell, I think you want to go on the map out you know, sooner rather than later. It's a bit of a roll of the dice. I mean, when it comes to offense, I mean, the best that we've seen thus far is a copper sword. So, I mean, if you want to traverse out, you want to also be able to get some experience along the way, and Aaron probably didn't feel comfortable 
just going out into the world and finding a bunch of the you know, enemies that we haven't even seen yet. Some Wraith Knights and green dragons, or um, yeah, any of the dragons, basically, or you know, various wyvern family members, or, or things that you'd like to be able to take out, but with 58 attack power, not exactly great. Yeah, you're not wrong there, and again, we have seen Sherlock monsters, you know, red dragons, wizards, uh, that sort of thing, um, pretty much in every possible direction, AK-47s as well. So that could be what is inspiring Aaron to try to pick up a little bit more experience here. Uh, I believe just one more wolf or a scorpion away from level 9. And uh, acknowledgement to one of our trackers, Beta Strep, who is... Uh... Working smarter, not harder, as far as the death counter on our tracker here. Uh, the new three-point something version of Dragon Warrior Randomizer. Allowing for the option of a death counter as part of your statistics there. That's what the D, col or the D row is underneath the E row. And that was a lot of HP and magic points. 19 and 31, respectively, for level 9. Oh boy! And, uh, it looks like that's gonna do it here. I mean, it's, you know, 500 or, and change to the next level here, so... It looks like Aaron is going to start to move out on the map again. Before we get off of, uh, or get away from it, uh, one other four-letter word that's apparently out there is beer, and I wholeheartedly concur. So checking in on all of our other runners here, Barbaloot has managed to get out of jail himself here. Does not have Eredric's armor just yet, but is at least able to start killing things and seems to be making as much use of that power as he can and was a little bit worried here about whether or not something happened on Billick's end but it looks like we have him back and big slamu just trying to comb that map and find any locations he hasn't found yet yep just in time to see him get the staff of rain that's uh <laughs> Very good in terms of the uh, technological hiccups and proverbial uh, cure for them, I suppose. Ooh, Big Slamu getting a nice piece of information here. Or running into an Axe Knight, tried running from it first, did not, did not do so, and they have Stop Spell. Now, this is two out of three times that they have cast it. This would be a pretty big pickup here for Big Slamu if he could kill this. Pretty so much alternating attack. 50, yeah. Yeah, attack, att alternating attack and stop spell, which is kind of working out for Big Slamu. Well, now it's four attacks to three stop spells. Five to three now. So, yeah, I'm thinking it's probably a 50% likelihood of casting the stop spell. Just based on the small sample data that we saw there. Yeah, it seems pretty pretty close to something like that. And, uh, oh, unfortunately, Aaron finding out that uh, the normally relatively juicy rogue scorpions have sleep. It slept and wrecked and sent right back to start. <laughs> yes, the, the numbers don't lie, and the death count spells disaster for the runners thus far. And apparently Samoa Joe, thank you for the Scott Steiner uh, reference. Aaron can't take this rogue scorpion out and he's not even going to try. Well, you say that and he's got a couple of hurt spells and does take it out. Well, okay, that technology didn't exist in Samoa Joe's time, to be fair.
Well, to Billick's credit, he has caught up at least to Big Slamu in terms of experience. Unfortunately, Big Slamu is not his opponent in this race, but showing a bit of gumption here. Even though Aaron has close to double Billick's experience, I mean, again, we've got all four runners here out of jail. It's really just a matter of who can start making some headway in terms of exploration. We've still got that sword out there, still got that stones of sunlight that we need to find in order to finish. Really is going to come down to who can start putting together those quest items first. Uh, Billick uh, getting a little adventurous there with the Demon Knight, and that being one of the dodgiest enemies in the game, did just that and was able to send Billick back. Now we've hit that kind of mid-game portion here where you're trying to find those mid-tier enemies that'll help vault the levels up. So, I mean, we've seen along the way here some wyverns have been pretty ideal, some raids as well. Billick now taking a look here in the back of Tanagil, going to pick up the Death Necklace. Big Slamu, I believe, is on a part of the continent that we haven't seen yet. I want to say he's about he's a bit northeast of Start, while Barbaloot... Still, without that Airdrix armor, doesn't really want to mess around with the swamp. And just going to go ahead and try to take the safest path that he can to find the things that he needs. Oh, and heal more at level 10, 6, 4, 15, and 1, the remaining stats, and that's a nice HP boost, and you love to see it. Absolutely, and you really like to see that heal more spell as well. Not terribly useful with the amount of HP that they have, uh, but could potentially open up, you know, if uh, Aaron were to find one of those Axe Knights we saw on Big Slamu's screen earlier. Odds definitely in his favor of making that kill. And with Axe Knights being a possibility, none of our runners have gone into Hawksness to check out what that Guardian tile is. If that is something like an Axe Knight, that may be a worthwhile go at level 10. Doing some wandering here to a portion that I don't know if we've necessarily... Oh, okay, that was the dead end over to the east, I would imagine. I want to say Billick might be close to where Slamu saw the Swamp Cave earlier, but again, it is hard to keep track of the map when you've got four people on the screen all at once. Big Slamu himself might... Uh, be in a portion of the map that he hasn't seen yet, so we might find some new locations here. If he can get away from this rogue scorpion, cannot do so. So every inch on the map, it has to be earned here, is what Seed is telling our runners as we approach that 45 minute mark. Pretty much all of our non-experience related progression has come within the first 10 minutes. Everything else has been a bit of a struggle so far. Barbaloot hanging on here and is... passing by... I forget which cave that is at this point. Yeah, Barbaloot's been kind of looking over at this bridge for a while now. Hasn't wanted to cross it to take, to walk through that swill of swamp tiles. Again, the only runner on our screen without Eirdrick's armor, but I don't believe we've seen anybody go this way yet. So with that heal, heal spell available, could potentially be finding locations that nobody else has found yet. 
Or could find a lot of nothing. Yeah, we, we did see the dead end earlier. Chat talking about the potential with that heal more spell of taking out whatever's in Hawksness. Uh, if we have seen what's on the spike tile, I missed it. Now, Big Slamu not quite level 10 yet. Slamu is approaching the area here, is hoping to get something big with level 9 because this wolf will get right at the number, the target number 975. And Aaron is following suit and is looking for something, and it's an Axe Knight! Oh, this is huge, and Big Slamu already knows he's got a decent chance of potentially taking this out. Now, again, if he already had that Heal More spell, it would be basically guaranteed. At this point, he will be at the mercy of those stop spells. Probably this is the third one, needs at least one more to land. Just gonna go for broke Damn here. This should do it. Does manage to get that. Oh no, it missed! Oh, the one. I hate to see it. A six and a quarter percent chance, and of all the times for it to occur. Absolutely brutal here, did choose to go for it, got the stop spell, got the RNG that he needed right up until the very end. And Aaron now, kind of in the driver's seat, Big Slam would just going immediately right back. Knows he got unlucky, knows he's got a decent shot at taking this out. Aaron liking what he sees until right now. <laughs> Oh dear. Oh no. And Big Slamu finding out the hard way also. So uh, they both liked what they saw in terms of grinding enemies up until then. Now the question is, I, I have to imagine Big Slamu is going to go back to try to take out that Axe Knight. Will Aaron do the same? With, uh, well, is, is doing a little grinding outside of the town. As uh, Barbaloot now over in Cole and Billick trying to get away from this green dragon and does. Doesn't bother to heal up and... I thought for a moment the game was about to make him pay for it. I was going to say, just kind of yellowing it here, trying to get into Cole. In a way, I can't necessarily blame him. Okay, now there's the heal being thrown. Gonna go past the town here. I mean, you're 47 minutes in, you found a bunch of stuff early, and then nothing but blocks and stress and tilts galore. Absolutely, and wow, gonna go ahead and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with this rogue scorpion here, not even casting the hurt spell, eventually will find out that they have sleep. Meanwhile, Aaron, I do believe, as long as he takes out this wolf, should be getting to level 11. That must have been his goal, getting that before going back. One power, two speed, three hit points. Not four magic points, but there's sleep radiant oh, and herbal. Ooh, alrighty. Jackpot. That is going to virtually guarantee being able to kill this Axe Knight. Aaron doesn't know it's an Axe Knight just yet, but he knows that that Hurtmore spell is going to be huge in terms of figuring out what, if anything, is below the spike tile. And Beta Strap calling for sitting in Hawks for 20 minutes. I see the argument. Uh, absolutely, you could go ahead and get yourself the levels, uh, right now, and make your map exploration that much more efficient. We'll have to see if that's what Aaron chooses to do. Yeah, given how much of the map has already been explored by our Forerunners, and how they have combed the land and they ain't found nothing, I can't say that I blame them. And here is Erdrick's wow. sword! Oh. Wow. Oh my goodness. The well. best weapon in the game, that's a 30... a plus 30 attack swing. 
from the Copper Sword to Erdrick Sword. And just like Beta Stripe called, I mean, uh, you've got a whole bunch of MP here. You might as well at least spend what you have. Again, it'll be interesting to see whether or not Aaron decides to come back after expending all this MP. We'll get at least one level here on this next Axe Knight. Yep, 3,000 the target number of experience to get to level 12. Big Slamu finding some uh, metal slimes here in this desert. I'm not sure if he's trying to look for more of them or not. 0, 16, 24, 9. Very nice level there for Aaron. Well, chat noting, yeah, with Erdrick's sword doing 13 damage to an Axe Knight, I can tell you that that basically was a minimum roll. Hundred attack power at the moment. Just trying to quick do them. Yeah, so it's uh, at this point, I guess, with the gain from level uh, from level eleven to twelve, it's now about a fourteen to twenty nine. So uh, for a melee, and big slamu with another metal kill. The rich getting richer. And Aaron gets away from the red dragon? Forty-five is just gonna try to melee this down here. A nice roll of 24. Might be able to take this one out here. And does so. So 3975 and the next level is 4125. So I don't think this one's gonna go. This will be a death warp here for Aaron. Meanwhile, finding a metal slime does get one hit point off of it. Death warp fail, apparently. Oh, there's the death warp. And there's two on the metal slime. Barbaloot getting, uh, getting the business from an NPC. And there is the third... And that's going to be level 10 for Billick. Right, Barbaloot looking to do a little bit of selling here. Yes, GG Withrow, they are indeed accurate. It's been a bit of a rough seed. Yep, 15 deaths for Aaron, who's been probably in the uh, the best shape of the bunch. 29 for Barbaloot. 21 for Billick, and 24 for Big Slamu. Uh, hot toddies, we have seen shields for sale. Unfortunately, our runners have not really had the money to purchase one. Uh, we did just see a small shield available there in Brecon area. I do believe Big Slamu went ahead and picked that up. Correct, so that's another four defense on Slamu's side, but the only towns we've seen so far now are Brecon area, Hawksness, and Cole. Oh, we did see Rimmeldar earlier, that's right. 
So Cantlin and Garenham are the two towns outstanding. Erdrich's sword was in Hawksness, not uh, just south of the, the starting castle, and it is guarded by an Axe Knight. But there's also red dragons that are part of the enemy mix, so they're kind of the guardian within the guardian here. And now Barbaloot is here in the mountain cave. As Billet gets slept and wrecked. Yeah, and this is a situation where unfortunately, uh, hopefully Barbaloot can pick up that armor before getting sent home. And once he does, uh, that news is going to sink in in a hurry. I mean, 55 minutes and it was sitting there the entire time, that's going to feel a bit rough. Big Slamu now picking up what I believe is his third or maybe even fourth Metal Slime of the Seed? My goodness. Well, now Barbaloot heading in the direction, and there's a gold man. Doing the smart thing and topping off, and there's the armor. And there's the pause for uh, a few... Uh, Choice FCC, words? A, a few FCC unregulated words. Or disallowed words, I suppose. Ooh, of Big Slam, we're seeing a town that I don't think we've seen before. We'll need to get through a few enemies in order to make it there. But this should be either Garenham, with as many as eight chests available, as we do still have that grave outstanding, or Cantlin, with the potential for coordinates. I think we've seen everything else cave-wise, so I don't think I don't think it's potentially eight. I think it's confirmed date. We've already seen the Tatlet Cave. We've already seen the Vanilla Stones Cave. We've already seen the Staff Trading Cave. We've seen the uh, Rainbow Drop Cave or Jerk Cave, as it's known. We've seen the Swamp Cave both ends. Yeah, I do believe that's accurate. If this is Garenham, the grave has to be at the bottom of it. This could be pretty huge for Big Slamu, having a bit of an advantage over all the runners, really. I mean, yes, missing that sword, but uh, the power being what it is, that Hurt More spell is really what you want. And more Metal Slimes! Okay, that one runs away. One runs. That does what it needs to. And there's Garenham! So this could be huge. I mean, all we're really looking for is the Stones of Sunlight. We do have... We know where Sherlock is. We know where the Jerk is. So it was just found Erdrick's sword. Alrighty, well, great pickup for him. Could now just sit here and whack on these armored knights. Knows that stop spell can never have any effect on him whatsoever. No fear! I'm part of Billick. And may just do what Beta Strup suggested earlier and sit here and grind out a few levels. Maybe even catch up to Aaron to you too, sitting still at a little over double his experience. We got a fighter's ring, an herb, and a magic key in Garenham. Now, if I'm not mistaken, the stones have to either be here in the grave or on the map. I believe those Correct. are the only possibilities we have left. Yeah, so there's a uh, one in six chance that it's on the overworld and a five in six we're about an 83% chance that it is here in the grave. Uh, Schmike, I believe we have only seen one up to now. Uh, and we have confirmed that there may only be the one. Oh, there's, there's another one. So, I do believe, now that we've seen... Cole had nothing. We've seen two cursed belts now. That does suggest to me that there has to be something on the map. So with everything being found here, 
I don't think there's any need to stay here in the grave. No, I don't think there is either, and I think Big Slamu knows that as well, knows that nothing can be here in the bottom, needs to find Cantlin, needs to pick up those coordinates. We know now that the stones are on the map, and it's just a matter of not of knowing, do we need to get that princess and get the GPS to help us out, or have we been tripping over the stones this whole time, just sitting outside of Tantagel Castle? I was gonna say, was that also? Uh, I was gonna say, I did not see what the guardian was at uh, at the the swamp cave there. I thought it was an axe knife, but I could very well be wrong. Wouldn't be the first nor the last time. No, it was a red dragon. Understandably, getting away. Yeah, thou hast found the red indeed. So now, Aaron, finding that swamp cave, it, it's been a while since I've seen anybody else on the other side here, and really, I believe the only thing that can be over here is Cantlin. As we cross that hour mark, uh, we haven't been making, I mean, pro pro progress has come in fits and starts here, but... Among all the knowledge that our runners have, we do now know that it really is just going to come down to who find Ca finds Cantlin first. And that person is going to be in the driver's seat. I mean, they're basically going to be in no mode. Yeah, K-N-O-W as opposed to... Us observing here, I, I think a lot of us have been in N-O mode for uh, the past 61 minutes and change. That deserved that appropriate amount of silence. Thanks, Lavkin. I mean, I was going to say it could be the, uh, the Saints mode, if you want a deep cut. But uh, here now, finding the town of Reconary. It's Aaron to you too. I was thinking that might be potentially Cantlin on the screen, but uh, not just yet. Yep, a cheap in, a shield pickup, and much rejoicing. some fairy water pickup here. Okay, this is a nice little move as well. So the nice thing for Aaron is that he found this pretty late and has the stats to pretty much make his way across this second continent. It just need to find that one town. And yeah, beta strep noting in chat. I mean, Billick is doing really one of the better things that he could do, which is just sit here and murder these axe knights, make use of that hurt more spell. And yeah, just slicing into that experience difference. Aaron at one point had double his experience, now within a thousand. Meanwhile, about a 1,500 difference uh, between Slamu and Barbaloot. Slamu now doing the same thing that Billick has been doing. This would indeed be quite the miracle comeback if Billick could... Ooh. Oh, okay. Nice level there. And of course, the game knows, buy a bunch of fairy water, immediately get repel at the next level. Absolutely. I just wanted you to be able to save those for Sherlock. That's all. The game's looking out for you. If you believe that, I've got a bridge I can sell you. And now finding Garenham. 
And I, I have to imagine we're going to see Aaron do basically the same thing that we saw Big Slam do a moment ago, which is check that grave, and as soon as you see that cursed bell, you can just put the logic together. It's going to tell you that you need to find Cantlin yesterday. Then all their troubles will seem so far away. But for now, we know they're here to stay. Wow, I can hear the booing coming through chat. It's amazing. I believe. I believe. But uh, does Aaron believe? We shall see shortly. Again, just trying to put together the rest of that information. Probably praying that the stones are here somewhere. But uh, we know up here in the commentator's booth that... Aaron will not have the amount of luck in the latter part of the seed as he did in the former. That is true. Aaron pointing out that uh, Aaron, uh, I'm sorry, Beta Strep in chat pointing out that Aaron does like to draw maps. And so with this cursed bell, I mean, you, yep, he's going to cast that outside spell. He knows all he needs to do is find Cantlin. And so now it comes down to how accurate has your mapping been? Is, oh, you know, are those coastlines that you haven't filled in yet, are they going to lead you in the right direction? Meanwhile, Billick, now with the experience lead over Aaron to you two. That's caught up. It's a difference of 20. It's essentially even. Still, with the way the seed is shaken out, I mean, that is... That shows one... You know, the heads-up play here from Billick uh, just sitting there in Hawksness for quite some time trying to get his stats where he wants them to be, but also just how ridiculously efficient Axe Knights are when you have that Hurt More spell. No doubt about it. Meanwhile, Slamu has expanded the experience lead over Barbaloot to... Uh... Basically, four times. Yeah, Barbaloot, uh, having about a fraction of the fun as Tadaru in chat, I have to imagine. Noting here that uh, Aaron doesn't really need any more levels, but again, that power is not quite where you'd want it. But here's Cantlin on Aaron's side, and is immediately bolting as quickly as the 8-bit sprite can to the old man for the coordinates. Absolutely. This map has been kind of a weird one, so let's go ahead and see what these coordinates are. 54 North, 19 West... Uh, Aaron is gonna know whether or not that's walkable. I have my- I have my doubts that they can go far enough north, but... We'll see what Aaron decides to do here. It'll- it'll tell us momentarily. Yeah, I'm... I'm a little doubtful. Billick thought about checking the Guardian, was like, nope. Whatever's there is not going to be any better than the Axe Knights that I just slaughtered all over the place. Not going for the Preemptive Princess Rescue either, as uh, has not found Garen Ham. And again, with those eight chests there, I mean, if you're keeping track of everything on, on your end, uh, you will know that uh, it's uh, 
pretty much down to Garenham or the map. Aaron, by the way, managing to stop spell one of these red dragons, and so it's been rendered completely harmless. That's going to be some free experience. Now, Billick, you want you wanted to go east there? You wanted to go northeast? I think that was the little path that led to... Yeah, that was the little path that led to... Oh, wow! Okay, so Cantlin was on the second continent, and it was due east of the Swamp Cave's exit. Yeah, it's a little unfortunate there. I mean, this is basically the same path that all of our runners have taken. We did see Big Slamu find Breconary before. Aaron found Breconary before heading off to the east. And Billick now doing the same. So we'll need to comb the southern part of this continent before eventually heading back north. And Aaron walking through this cave. He is going to the spike tile. Looks like he thinks rescuing the princess is the best play. Stop spell hits. Yeah, that's at least two for two. And yeah, beta strap confirming. Uh, that is the that's the data that we have to work with so far. And if Aaron wants to take one of these out on his way back, he'd be really close to level 15 and just shoring, continuing to shore up those stats for the DL2 fight. I mean, the hit points are already in Death Necklace range. I mean, maybe another level wouldn't hurt to... Nah, it's not gonna bother. I mean, nope, plus this... there's, there's on the way there. Yep, there's the return... There's level 14 for Big Slamu and that big 22 strength gain. Well, now Aaron is going to have that GPS in hand. And I have to imagine shortly thereafter, we'll have those Stones of Sunlight and again. Aaron is more or less in no mode, just needs to do the homework, check off a few more boxes, and Sherlock access will be his. There's the repel spell. I guess Aaron trying to... Oh, that's right. Has to... I'm, I'm thinking he's heading to the... Rainbow Drop Cave is like, oh yeah, we have that little pesky thing of finding the stones first. Gets away from a red dragon, easy peasy. Yeah, no problem to it. Uh, haven't seen their agility recently, but uh, at, this, uh, at this stage of the game, you kind of hope that you're, you know, somewhere north of 70, 80, 79, so I believe that's about a 45% chance to run away. Well, a good point being made in chat, knowing that the Red Dragons have both Sleep and the DL2 Breath, or the Wombo Combo as it's known, that it would be rather resource intensive, so the extra level certainly wouldn't hurt, and it'll probably help. Absolutely. Big Slamu. Uh, just going toe-to-toe -to -toe here. No no stop spell, no hesitation, just mashing that A button. He says, I'm either going to get this experience or I'm going to go home. Well, here is level 15. Let's see how useful it is or is not. One power, three speed, eight hit points, two magic points. Eh. That basically changed nothing. Uh, and, oh, okay, yeah, it's going to be pretty much right here. I want to say that Aaron has gone far enough north. So... But it's left to go west a good ways, or maybe not. I I, I want to say he's gone east to get here, and then we'll need to go back west and then should be able to uh, track down that item. Or maybe thinks it's on the other side. And yeah, Betastrep uh, noting that uh, Billick has not uh, quite put all the logic together and is going to dive the grave. So this will be a learning opportunity for Billick. Just to, just to be clear, 
Uh, for anyone who doesn't quite understand what's going on, so every time you find a Cursed Belt in this game, that is a little bit of information, as Cursed Belts replace important items in chests. That includes the sword, the armor, the token, the stones, and the harp, as well as that fairy flute. And if you find three of those Cursed Belts, you know that Cole, Hawksness, and Cantlin coordinates are all going to have something important. And so by process of elimination here, we knew Cole had nothing, we knew Hoxus had the sword, and so once you find that other cursed belt, you know that those coordinates are going to be important. And so, again, uh, hopefully Billick will watch this VOD back and keep that information in his pocket for next time, as Aaron is looking for those stones. Chat noting, I believe the death necklace as well as Erdrich's... Or you did mention the sword and armor. I, I stand corrected. Oh, Aaron kind of trying to MLG this uh, search spot and is a little bit off course here. Oh, is two tiles away, has the stones of sunlight... I have to imagine... Oh, was maybe thinking about taking the inn in uh, Breconary and decides no... I've got this in right down here, and, uh, oh, I has to get the rainbow drop, of course. So, Big Slamu returning Princess Gwalen after the rescue. And Barbaloot is in Cantlin as well, so we'll be getting the coordinates if, uh, if he has not done so already. Yeah, this, uh, this definitely isn't over yet, as, uh, if there are any red dragons to be found in Sharlock, any one of them could back attack sleep and just melt you down with that DL2 breath, so really, uh, we won't know who that winner is until the bitter end, and, uh, again, it, it really is just gonna come down to what it is exactly that we see in Sharlock. Now, I'm not exactly sure where Aaron is going here. I wanted to say he was just going to pop in for an inn and then head straight to Sherlock. That might be what he's doing right now, but I don't think he's walking in the Sherlock direction. I could be doing what I usually do and forget where Sherlock is. I suppose it's possible that he never saw it. I want to say I've only actually seen it on Big Slamu's screen. saying for Billick to stop fighting things. Although that red dragon didn't have any, uh, or didn't cast sleep that time. But yeah, you just, you need to go east around this little body of water here. Meanwhile, Aaron has laid down the rainbow drop and is in Sherlock. The first to do so, about 78 minutes in. Slamu now picking up the rainbow drop as well. Barbaloot just has 
Run into some various challenges along the way here, still at level 9. They just had trouble juggling the exploration versus grinding, although this has been a fairly difficult seed. The 4 attack at the start... Rather problematic, as Billick now getting the info of the coordinates. The late Erdrich's armor, yeah, I mean, almost an hour in. Aaron, meanwhile, doing a pretty good job going through, but as I say that, there's the Red Dragon. Goes for a stop spell, it has no effect, and now here's the sleep, and the DL2 breath. Wakes after one turn and does get away. And of course, next step right into an Armored Knight, because the game knows. Basement 3, first attempt does get away from that red dragon. And it's quickly on to Basement 5, known as the U. Here's a blue dragon. We haven't seen them all game. Not even bothering to fight it, so... Looks like my hopes will be a little bit off target this seed. Slamu now in Sherlock as well. Now again, these are two separate one-on-one -on -one matchups, so... Aaron 2U2 and Big Slamu are leading their respective races over Billick and R. Barbaloo. Well, looking like a pretty clean dive here for Aaron, already making his way towards that spike tile. Big Slamu, of course, not in the same race, but still hot on his heels. We could see both of these races wrap up almost at the same time. And one last encounter right at the... Front of the Dragon Lord and trying to get away. A couple of stop spells. And the fifth time is the charm. Gonna utilize a couple of herbs here is Aaron. Uh, we see here 15 and 24 are the death counts for Aaron and Billick. So, by my math here, I believe that's an even hundred deaths combined between all four runners. Aaron gonna go ahead and move on towards that second phase of the Dragon Lord fight. No back attack here. Starting off with a strong 16, not quite the max. Does get that opening double 32 damage in the books already, looking like a pretty comfy fight. but is getting meleeed for over 48. That is something to keep track of. Absolutely. Uh, I'm going to say 50 is the mark where you would be safe, potentially 51. As Billick turning in that princess now and uh, is basically where Aaron was about 20 minutes ago. Completely in no mode, just needs to put all those items together. 
and can go ahead and take on that Dragon Lord as well. Aaron swinging for 17. I want to say I've missed at least one swing in there, so probably in the 70 to 75 damage range. I've been keeping track now up to 108. Now 126 did get meleeed for wow these melees are rolling high here. But at 142 with still six heal mores left to go, it's pretty much just don't miss menu and you've got it here and there it is. Yeah, all four runners are playing the same C, but it is Aaron 2U2 against Billick and Big Slamu against R Barbalute. And yeah, I think we can call this one here. Get your GGs out for Aaron 2U2, who is going to get a victory and a point in the Red Slime group with an official race time. We'll find out once Gwalen's uh, doing her But Thou Musting. Aaron, do you, do you want to hit done and race time? Well, unofficially it was about 125.30, but... Uh... Aaron seems to be enjoying the moment while Big Slamu moves on to his Dragon Lord fight. One level, I believe, uh, below where Aaron 2 2 was. And now we will just have to see. Oh, going into this at 62 hit points, this could get a little bit dicey if he gets back attacked here. And he does! So we'll need to open up with an immediate heal more. And only at 99 max HP here. And starting off with a 10, you really don't want to see that hitting, I believe, for 9 to 17. 11! Oh my, this could be close. Twenty, No, 38, 38 damage now with that 17. I see what happened. For some reason, I thought all four of them were in the same race room, but they were not. So I had to look to the other race room, and we have an official time of 125.34 for Aaron, and Billick had forfeited right after the fact. That makes sense. I also did not realize they were in the same room. <laughs> I've just been looking at Big Slammer's room the entire time, but now using that Heal More spell, another swing here... I want to say I missed a swing. I, I want to say he's at 53 damage, but hopefully higher than that. This one I don't know because, heck, I missed a race room. Oh, and with that ding, it looks like we have Aaron to you too up in the commentator's booth with us. Aaron, well done. Uh, you want to uh, walk us through the first five minutes of that seed real quick? Pretty eventful. Yeah, so... Um... Hello, I, I'm glad that everyone, uh, at least someone else made it through at this time. I had no idea if that start was going to be an absolute, like, everyone was locked out or everyone found something to fight and it just took me forever, but holy cow, yeah. Free walk into Mountain Cave, you know, struggled through, I had to use the herbs, but just I'm gonna walk right into Urgic's armor, it's wonderful. Yeah, I mean, uh, everyone else was kind of doing the uh, Tantagel homework that you would normally do in that scenario where you do have those keys. And, wow, I'm going to pivot real quick. Big Slamu, with the last possible attack, takes out oh. DL2, went on 14, killed DL1 with 60 HP, got back attack, needed every single resource that he could find and manages to do it right there at the very end, so Big Slamu will win his race. After talking to the princess, she will jump into his arms, and he will hit that dot done. Break out your GGs one more time for Big Slamu, finishing in first place with an official racetime.gg time of 1 hour, 
28 minutes and 54 seconds. So the lucky left side of the screen wins the day. But Aaron, I'm going to turn it back to you. Uh, you know, you did pick up that armor pretty early on. And uh, it, it's kind of hard to keep track of four people all at once. Uh, you were kind of going back to there was a, a zone with uh, wolves uh, right next to I, I want to say it was Rimbledar. Uh, right next to just kind of south of uh, Tantagel there. Uh, you went back there, uh, um, uh, I want to say, on two or three different occasions. Uh, what exactly were you looking for at that point? Well, I think um, it was close to Hawksness, right? It was just south of Tantagel. And I was looking for levels anytime because it was the most like basic uh, enemies I could fight to gain a level. When I, Every time I went there, I was really close, so... Kind of felt like I should have tried Hawks since a little bit earlier, like once I got heal more, but I don't think I waited too long for that. Yeah, it was just it was just a decent grind zone, I think, and that was uh, really all I wanted out of it. So Barbalut has forfeited by talking to the king and opting not to continue, and was told rest then for a while. I, I had to, I couldn't help but chuckle at that. That's a good swag way to uh, go out. Alrighty, well, we've got quite a crowd in here. I am going to go ahead and turn things over to Aaron to U2's opponent, Billick, who is here with us. Uh, Billick, you want to walk us through uh, your thoughts on the seed? Yeah, the start was absolutely brutal for me. Um, I just had, couldn't find a way forward for the first 20 minutes or so. And then I finally located Cole and was able to get a weapon that helped me out. Yeah, it's pretty tough when uh, you're starting on just four power and... Oh, it's actually Hawksness down there to the south that, uh, you know, it, 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 people are finding money uh, all over the place and hoping to spend it. And you did have to make it about a screen and a half east, uh, but with all the directions to pick from, uh, pretty much everybody found coal a little bit later than they might have otherwise liked. Um, but Billick... Uh, one thing, uh, one place where you did manage to catch up and, 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 you know, do a pretty good job of trying to even things up was Hawksness. Uh, I'm curious, uh, you know, you, you find Hawksness and you find that Axe Knight there. Did you already know that it was pretty harmless or did you figure that out uh, when you when you killed it to find the item? Well, I figured I had to do something and that, that was like an S tier grind in Hawksness. So I figured the only way I would catch up is just doing that grind right then and there. I think that I did feel like I caught up a little bit, but I, at that point I figured I was so far behind I didn't really have much of a chance, but I, you know, just kept going and did the best I could with it. Yeah, I mean, from here up in the commentator's booth, it did seem like the right choice to make for run. Did you have something you wanted to add? I was going to say, you didn't just catch up a little bit, you caught up a lot of bit. Yeah, well, I, yeah. at one point, uh, I mean, Aaron, uh, as I had uh, talked to him when he came in before, I mean, out of all four runners, uh, he was the one first in the mountain cave, managed to clear it out about five minutes into the seed and got that armor well before anybody else. Now, of course, having Eredric's armor isn't going to help you too much when you only have four power, but it does help, uh, and... Uh, Pretty much had a commanding lead for most of the seed, but yeah, staying there in Hoxus as long as you did, uh, at least in terms of experience points, did even things up. And uh, now with that ding, I do believe we have everybody here. Uh, I'm going to turn things over to Big Slamu real quick. Big Slamu, again, GG, uh, congratulations on that finish. Do uh, you want to walk me through some of your thoughts on that seed overall? Oh, that, that start. 18 minutes for a manager drakey but i mean i at the end of the day that was the only that was the only way i saw forward and of course then i started seeing red slimes in zone one right after that so that didn't help <laughs> no i mean feels good to win honestly i mean i love i love the new the new players in the community so barbara Lute, thank you for jumping in i'm excited to see you uh hopefully stick around the game i mean i wish i could have beat aaron too but i can't always be that lucky Yeah, it can be uh, a little bit tough. Uh, I mean, and it, it was hard to find uh, anything that you could really kill. I, I want to say Billick found a few red slimes here and there in zone one. But for the most part, I mean, I, I want to say both you, Big Slamu, and Aaron found metal slimes that helped you get 
out of those early levels. And then other than that, it was really down to whether or not you could crit a ghost or uh, find some other way of getting off level one. Two uh, of the four runners did magic drakeys to get out of the uh, to, to get out of the mix. Yeah, it was crazy going magic drakey, metal slime, metal slime. That was like my those were my first three kills. So I went from I was zero, twelve, what was it like forty four, and then another one hundred and twenty xp, one hundred and twenty eight xp on top of that. So I cascaded pretty quickly once I got going in the mountain. Yeah, I think uh, I probably got slightly luckier than that. Like just stumbling onto the armor was absolutely ridiculous and then happening to uh go i went back into mount and i went into that top left corner to floor two because i remembered seeing the magic drakey and then i ran into a metal slime instead and was like oh my gosh this is utterly ridiculous and all right and uh let's go ahead and hear from our barbalute side uh, and you a wonderful job here uh pushing through uh, quite the tough seat here. Uh, can you walk us through your experience a little bit? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, first of all, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, good. Uh, so GG, Big Slamu, uh, congrats on the win. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> that was rough. Uh, I knew uh, getting my first experience point twenty six minutes in was probably not a winning strategy, but felt like I was doing what I could. Um uh, of course, then there was that time I went into the mountain cave going for a gold grind and, and or to get the magic armor once I'd already found coal and then found that, that last chest was Erdrick's armor. And by that point, I realized there was really no hope. It's, it's funny because you were only five minutes behind me at that point, which was definitely recoverable. <laughs> I don't think anybody started off well in this one. No, I want to say at one point, uh, chat was noting that I think it was actually Billick who got the first set of experience points by killing a red slime. And even that was probably about 15 or 20 minutes into the seed. So, uh, yeah, everybody with a tough start. Some people a little bit luckier than others, but the experience was not easy to come by in any event. Yeah, well, I look forward to hopefully a better start in my next game. Anything is better than that, trust me. This is not this is not normal Dragon Warrior of 2022. No, absolutely not. And so with that, I've exhausted pretty much all my questions for these runners. Faron, did you have anything you wanted to add? Uh, that's pretty much all I've got here. Uh yeah, no, you, you pretty much nailed it all. It's uh it was a rough seed to say the least and uh hopefully next time it'll be better i don't know that's about all i've got yeah it's uh pretty hard to uh do worse than for starting strength and again pretty much uh no weak enemies to speak of uh no towns nearby where you can pick up torches or fairy water or anything of that nature but again uh you know where there's a will there's a way and aaron and big slam who did manage to uh, move on uh, with the 1-0 and victory here. Uh, Aaron, do you have any final thoughts before we move on? Just, I think we, we all want a little bit for continuing this, because if this were a practice seed, I probably would have deleted it after five minutes. <laughs> I wouldn't have blamed you at all whatsoever. Same here. <laughs> yeah, no, that that's... Uh, yeah, uh, that's a pretty solid statement. Uh, Billick, any final thoughts on the seed? Or any, anything yeah. you want to add? Uh, just want to say GG to Aaron, and thanks to the crew, everybody, the organizers, the commentators, the restreamers for all your hard work. And yeah, I, I actually requested a reseed after 20 minutes, which didn't go through, but right after that, I was able to find uh, get out of jail. So it ended up working out okay. But thanks again, guys. Absolutely. Big Slamu, any final thoughts from you? No, I definitely echo that. Thank you for everybody that helps put this on. Um, thank you guys for coming, for tracking, for restreaming it all. I mean, we couldn't do any of this without you guys, and this is the biggest undertaking I think we've ever had in the community. So thank you to everybody that's helping out, and uh, looking forward to hoping to hold on to this uh, sixth seat as we keep going forward. Absolutely. And finally, our Barbalute, uh, you know, wonderful showing of tenacity. And uh, I have hopes, uh, you know, for a less challenging seed in your future. Um, other than that, any final thoughts? 
Uh, just once again, congrats to Big Slamu. Uh, thanks to all the restreamers and commenters, uh, commentators. And uh, I look forward to hopefully some better rounds in the future. And Absolutely. good luck in the rest of the tournament, everyone. Absolutely. And uh, as we do have that schedule up, uh, it's clear to see that uh, there are plenty of chances for better seeds or plenty of chances for even worse seeds. Only time will tell. The one thing that we do know for sure is there is an absolute slew of action buffet of seeds on the table here for the future. But for now, we are going to wrap things up here. So those of you left in chat, please drop a follow on all four of our runners today. Big Slamu, uh, Big Slamu here, and uh, Aaron and Billick and R. Barbalute, they put on a wonderful show for you here tonight. Big thanks, as always, to the crew behind the scenes, putting together uh, all the things, pushing all the buttons. Archfield Monk doing the uh, tracking, Beta Strep doing, or, sorry, Archfield Monk doing the restream, Beta Strep doing the tracking, and Ron Burgundy and myself doing the commentary. And as always, if you out there in the audience have not yet hit that link, it is right there in the chat. It will take you to that Dragon Warrior Randomizer Discord. You could be right here in the commentary booth with myself and Ferran talking about the seats, having a lot of fun, being a part of this tournament and this community, but the thing that you have to do is click that link. You will find guides galore and people who are willing to help you get involved. But until the next race that we run on this channel, we are going to send you over to Furon Burgundy, who is going to be doing some Zelda 1 randomizer practice, is part of that Beginner's Royale tournament. So let's go well, cheer we're him about on. The game. We're not talking about practice. We're talking about the game. Oh, oh, you we're know, not I'm doing the, the week five time trial. So if you have not done the week five, you may want to not follow the raid, but... Alrighty, well, it is up to you whether you want to follow the raid or not, but you don't have to go home, but unfortunately you cannot stay here as we are going to Furon Burgundy. We are going to go offline, so until next time, have a wonderful evening and stay safe, everybody. Thank you for tuning in.